now we're going to focus on the last class of subphylum vertebrata, and that's going to be mammals. Mammals are warm-blooded vertebrates that have fur or hair and milk glands for their young. Mammals, as we said, are defined by having hair or fur and mammary glands, which are milk glands to feed their young. Mammals also have differentiated teeth, which means that they have different teeth used for different functions. Some are for chewing, some are for tearing flesh, while others are for biting. Mammals also have three middle ear bones in each side of the head, and these six middle ear bones make up, in the human, the total of 206 bones of the body. Mammals are also endothermic, meaning they maintain a body temperature, so they have to stay warm or they'll die. Mammals have a highly developed nervous system, brain, spinal cord, and different nerves throughout the body. Uh, mammals also have a muscular diaphragm. The muscular diaphragm aids in breathing. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped muscular organ that separates the thoracic or chest cavity from the abdominal cavity in mammals. This creates a, a pressure in the chest that allows for the lungs to expand and contract. The lungs inhale and exhale because of the diaphragm and the pressure it creates. Mammals are divided into three groups. These are not three orders, but three groupings. The first one are monotremes. Then we'll talk about marsupials and placental. Monotremes, though, are divided into order monotremes. Monotremes do lay eggs. They are oviparous. This would include the platypus, the duckbill platypus, and the echidna. Remember, because they're oviparous, they have a one hole, which is your cloaca. So just like birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish, monotremes do lay eggs, and they do have a cloaca. But what's the distinguishing characteristic that puts them in the mammal category? It's hair, fur, milk glands. Okay, here's the duckbill platypus and the echidnas. Now, these are not anteaters. Anteaters are different, but they are called the spiny, long-nosed anteater. This is not a porcupine, not an anteater, not a hedgehog. Then we have marsupials. Marsupials have pouches for their young to develop and grow. So the young actually has to crawl as it's a little tiny uh, baby, has to crawl inside uh, the mother's pouch to get to the nipple for milk. Now this is not order marsupialis. There are actually seven marsupial orders. The babies, the young are born in the embryonic stage and then complete their development in the marsupium or the pouch. So they are pink, tiny little babies, they could hardly move, they don't even have their eyes open, they don't have fur on them, and they have to actually crawl up into the pouch to develop. Here we have possums, and I believe this is a picture of a wombat, and you can actually see the wombat inside the pouch. So the marsupial orders consists of a lot more than just the kangaroo, the koala bear, and the flying squirrel. Then we have placental mammals. This is actually a subclass, and with placentals, a placenta is a growth bag. This develops within the uterus. The uterus, when the baby's born, does not come out, but the placenta does come out with the baby. Uh, living placental mammals are actually classified into 16 orders, and you can see uh, the uterus here, and then the placenta lines the uterus, so when the baby comes out, the placenta breaks, and then that's when um, the water broke because it's the amniotic fluid coming out. And then the baby comes out and pulls with the umbilical cord, pulls the placenta out with the baby. So you can see all the different types of orders of different placentals. Now we're going to go ahead and do some labs that are going to focus on some of the specific structures that you're going to have to know for the mammal. And the first one is the mammary teeth. We're going to, the differentiated teeth, we're going to uh, need to know that the biting teeth are called the incisors. You have a total of four top and four bottoms, so a total of eight incisors. We have the two central incisors on the top, and then two lateral or side incisors for biting. Then you have the total of four canines, which are for tearing flesh. And then you have your uh, cuspids, bicuspids. You have your premolars and molars for chewing. So you have your eight your incisor, canine, premolar, or bicuspid teeth, 
and molar. Then we have the ear. You can see the you can see the eardrum there, and then you have something called the malus, incus, and stapes. Uh, you'll have to know the malus, incus, and stapes are the three middle ear bones. They connect the eardrum to the cochlea, which actually has fluid inside there to allow for uh, vibrations, which sends impulses to the brain through the auditory nerves. In elementary school, you might have heard about the hammer, anvil, and stirrup, but the actual names are the malus, incus, and stapes. And you can see how small they are as they actually fit on a dime. So we just talked about the teeth and the ear. Make sure you know that they are two important separate parts of the human body, but do not confuse them or put them together merged as one. Please don't do that. Then we have the diaphragm, which creates that pressure in that muscular organ for breathing. As the diaphragm contracts or moves down, uh, we're going to inhale. As the diaphragm relaxes or moves up, we're going to exhale. So for the alimentary canal, we're going mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, anus. But we do have the liver, pancreas, gallbladder, which are part of the digestive system, but not part of the alimentary canal, meaning food does not pass through those three organs, but they do secrete enzymes into the small intestine to help digestion. And here's the mammal eye. We did look at this with, uh, with the fish. We did look at the eye briefly with the fish, and you can see the cornea, which is the outside covering, and then you have the iris, which is the color of the eye. If you have brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, that's the iris. It's actually the muscle. Uh, as the iris gets bigger, your pupil gets smaller. As the iris contracts, gets smaller, your pupil gets bigger. So the pupil is just a space between the iris. And then you have the lens, which is biconvex. It's bending out on both sides. It's not circular like the fish's eye. And then in around uh, the lens, you have some muscles that hold the lens in place. And you do have some fluid, this aqueous humor in the front. And then in majority of the eye, the bulk of the eye, you have this jelly-like vitreous humor. And then going past the lens down to the optic nerve, uh, you, have, you have the retina, which has rods and cones. And these rods and cones, rods give you black and white, and the cones actually give you color for sight. Yum, yum. And then the sheep brain, you have uh, the two cerebral hemispheres. You have the cerebellum, which is in the back. And if you cut that in half, you actually, if you look at the cerebellum, you see this arbor vitae. Um, looks arbor meaning tree, vitae meaning life. It looks like this little tree of life. And then you have the spinal cord.